So hello everyone, my name is Margaret Spiker. I am a map scientist and tech coordinator for a company called Zenity Corporation. We're based in Denver, Colorado. Um, and I am also a co-organizer for OSM Colorado. Um, and uh, today we're gonna talk about our Denver Metro buildings import. Um, and we've lovingly called it the slow road. <laughs> and um, one of our latest epiphanies, um, which really was an epiphany from the beginning, is that what we're really building is a framework for the import process. Um, and uh, before I get started, I just want to mention that that road is not in Denver. Um, <laughs> it's called the Million Dollar Highway, and it's between uh, Uray and Durango, which is a really beautiful area of our state. And um, so all the other photos that I've peppered in are actually from Denver, and uh, we have a lot of murals on our buildings. And actually right now, this weekend, is an organization called Crush Walls. So, um, you know, under fair use, I've been trying to cite the artists where I can, but I also just call out Crush Walls. And they're celebrating their 10th year of getting um, uh, artwork into beautifying our community. So I thought it was a good thing to give them a shout out. So, uh, at a very high level, um, we, we have government provided high quality, high accuracy data, and they reached out to us um, for an OSM import because they were really interested in um, what it would look like to build attribution. And um, so, of course, we followed protocols with OSM community. We built our wiki and uh, developed our plan, and, um, and we're doing it for a nine county metro region. Um, so at the beginning, of course, we have this, um, oops, wrong way. There we go. We have this happy distorted view, <laughs> right, of what the project's going to be like. And of course, uh, twist and turns in the road where we can't quite see exactly what's going on or coming ahead. Um, and so just a little background on the project. Um, phase one and phase two uh, acknowledge that we're going to do a pilot to bring some buildings in. And, um, and essentially, we have planometrics data, which is derived from three inch and six inch, six inch imagery. And so the building roof prints are actually one of about 12 layers that include curb cuts and sidewalks and trails and just I can't list all of them off the top of my head, but uh, a lot of really high quality line work that doesn't have attributes. And um, so in our background, we go um, phase one, we're gonna do a pilot. Phase two, if we like it, we're gonna import the buildings. And then phase three is that we're gonna do all the other layers. <laughs> and so there's a little bit of a jump there, right? Um, but the point really is that uh, our colleague, our, our collaborator at the Regional Council of Governments, Dr. Cog, um, she's really interested in, in that, that workflow, right? She's interested in the future of these other layers, and, and this seemed like a good place to start. So, so it's a little bit of a jump in how it looks in our documentation, but really we do have this very big vision of, um, of getting the planometrics into the map. So here's Ashley and John. Ashley's wonderful, so is John. <laughs> Ashley is the, um, she's the information systems manager for Dr. Cog, which is a really great acronym, and she runs the DRAP program, which is another great acronym. So Dr. Cog is Denver Regional Council of Governments, and so it's the nine county metro. And the DRAP is the aerial imagery program that does every other year flights of uh, the nine county metro area. And then John Gottsagen is our uh, chief geospatial information officer and um, that position was created in 2013 as response to the Colorado floods that we had at that time. And then in more recent years, he's become also our chief data officer for the state. So he manages uh, a geo portal and I believe four or five statewide layers which include broadband and um, addresses and parcels. And so the addresses are what we got to merge with our buildings. Um, that's our address source. And so of course, um, really just the broad pattern of where the squares are smaller, 
is where we have the higher resolution imagery. And that's really a result of Ashley's efforts to go out and be the broker with all these different nine counties and you know, however many municipalities are within that to um, get buy-in and of course actually have them buy-in with funding. <laughs> so, um, uh, and then yeah, the geocache, not to be, uh, which says crush FTP, which somebody pointed out to me is not the crush walls thing that I was talking about. They just, it's funny. So that's the FTP, it links you to the FTP. And then um, Seth was actually able to use that FTP to put all of the aerial tiles up on the open aerial map for us. So our tasking manager now will pull in that um, three to six inch, six inch imagery into your JOSM editor, which is really, really nice. So here's just a screenshot of um, a single building with the addresses that we were able to combine. Um, they, uh, we also ran a merge with a zoning data set, so that's how we got our, uh, our building type. So um, the import buildings come in with either residential, commercial, or public. And of course, um, the reason why you have humans doing it and not just dumping the whole thing in is that wherever possible, we update the house when we can tell that it's a house. And right now we're leaving the residential tag as um, a precursor to our quality step that'll come later where we can use the, you know, just run a query on the things that are residential and that'll hone us in on the stuff that didn't just come in super smoothly. But the, um, the screenshot at the top above it is a uh, we have a Colorado Information Marketplace, which is our open data portal for the state, and that's the statewide addresses on that portal. Um, and then, of course, merged with the building footprints down below. Um, though it's funny is this does have North Madison Street on there, and I'm we'll just leave that as a a, a foreshadowing <laughs> bit. <laughs> Okay, so our timeline, um, similar to our phase one and phase two, uh, we are you know, really well um, thought out as we went through the process with the OSM community and, and building our wiki, and then we get to the last line and we say summer 218 to finish TBD. Um, and so we really don't know exactly yet how long it's gonna take. Um, but uh, as we talked about in the previous slide, our goal is really, you know, of course to have quality buildings and addresses, but also to, to build this process, right? And to flesh out and vet the process along the way. So that really does make it TBD and, and also the, the slow road part of the presentation. Um, so one of the, the really fun things that's been coming out of it is all the tools that we are building and creating and experimenting with. And um, and if you were in this room before lunch, you saw uh, one of our community members, Jennings Anderson, who um, we're really fortunate. He is um, he is a uh, we'll just call him a GeoJSON wizard for you know <laughs> just a, a a nice title but um so having him on the team has been super invaluable because of you know the ability to look into the data and see what's going on in our process and um so you know whenever we need a tool or something we kind of just order it up from Jennings and uh and he says how do you want that data and you know I've been a GIS person for a while so I'm like well shape file. And he's like, it's so much easier for me to just build you this interactive map. <laughs> I'm like, yes, good, interactive map, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so the first tool that I wanna talk about is our um, tasking manager workflow. And as a technical operations person, I really do believe that processes are tools. Um, and so uh, Jimmy wanted me to shout out that we are, um, we are using Tasking Manager 2, so definitely chat with Jimmy about that if you have thoughts on us being on Tasking Manager 3. <laughs> but essentially, um, on the left is um, one of Jennings' uh, fabulous products that he created for us, and um, 
And for a while, we had this really big bottleneck of getting tasks up into Tasking Manager, and it was totally a process thing where somebody, just one person, was um, you know running the query, building the import files, and then putting it up on Tasking Manager. And so, you know, if that one person was really busy at work or whatever, and we had an editathon coming up, we just talked about maps for that time if he didn't wasn't able to get us the tasks, right? So. Um, so what Jennings was able to do was take the one on the left, which was initially created as a viewer, and um, allow us to actually download our tiles from this interface, and, and also simultaneously creating the bounding box um, with the GeoJSON file. So together, um, it's really just a couple si simple clicks in Tasking Manager to generate our projects. And uh, so on the left is um, just a little shout out that there's always, you know, there's an analog thing in there once in a while. And um, so I don't do it very frequently, but um, without sort of just keeping track of where we've been with the grids um, and then actually that workflow of generating the tasks, um, just a simple uh, little analog map does um, allow me to make sure that you know, we're not leaving like slivers of projects that have been left. But um, so since then, we have uh, been able to generate a lot more projects more frequently. So, um, you know, in our incredibly crazy backlog, that was one that we recently yay, got through. And uh, so that's since opened the floodgates of getting tasks out there. Um, so now remains, of course, the other uh, compatible challenge with that is getting the people to do the tasks. <laughs> um, so, um, but you know, before segueing into other parts, uh, the other one of the big challenges that we're kind of currently working on right now is, is how do you define completeness? And and complete is intentionally with air quotes because uh, you know we started this really in 2016 with 2014 data, and so they are preparing to fly the 2020 data next summer and we are still importing 2014 buildings. And if you're familiar at all with Denver, like that might as well be 1990 buildings for how much it changes there. So, um, so really the concept of completeness uh, needs to be more of this esoteric moving window, right? And so it's really more about uh, following with a quality control plan um, than it is about making sure that we keep track of who edited which grid at what time and when did it happen and and sort of that traditional you think checking the boxes of we have you know two maybe three thousand grid cells and we've done forty grid cells well yeah that shows how far we made through what we're doing but it doesn't really tell you about the completeness of the data or the quality of the data that we're building into the map right so um, so because of that. Um, we, again, to Jennings' uh, tools that he's creating for us, um, we started looking at it, um, of course, in the middle, which is that import progress map, which is just how many of those little grids can we turn from green to red. But the other part of it is um, what we're calling where the buildings have no addresses, which actually what Jennings called, and I love that, so we're just calling it that, <laughs> um, which is really that quality control phase and prepping for that. So. Um, yes, the buildings are in there, but then what's the condition of them and, and what actually is going on with each individual building will come in that next phase of, of the address validation. So here's a zoom on the address validator and a pretty simple query, right? Just, you know, less or more than 100 that are missing the address numbers. Um, and you can just see kind of the concentration and distribution. And um, so a zoom on our import progress map, I touched on a little bit about how it's helped with the workflow, but um, it really has become this one-stop shop of, yeah, we can see which grids we've touched and put into Tasking Manager and sent through the pipeline, but we can also, um, 
update this to see, okay, that went through the pipeline. Now did we get to the point where there's actually 100% buildings in there, or in some cases, 120% buildings in there, or, <laughs> or sometimes 80% buildings? Um, especially uh, there's a difference between a, a single unit that has a single address, a one-to-one, -one, and a you know multi-unit condo or duplex, which is uh, one-to-many in terms of the address database merging with the buildings. Um, so we are skipping in this round of it, the multi-part buildings and creating a special task force for that because um, there's a lot of work to do and, and one of the trends that's arising is distinguishing between skill levels and the challenging nature of each task. So some tasks have uh, zero conflict or um, as it's shown in the screenshot, there's no existing buildings in OSM. So if you show up to an edit-a-thon and you're like, hey, I'm curious, I feel way more comfortable sending you there because, um, yeah, maybe you bring it in with some unclean addresses that's easier to clean up than um, I imported this hospital that <laughs> you know, has so many different parts and, and so then it's like a much bigger cleanup task, right? We'd much rather have that go through a skilled editor pipeline, if you will. So, um, so yeah, the, our one-stop shop is pretty awesome. Uh, and, and then of course, on the right-hand side, it shows we can right-click and then um, get a GeoJSON out that associates the grids as well. Um, and so I mentioned uh, processes are tools. And so uh, our status literally is whiteboard. <laughs> we are at the design phase of um, what does it look like to get to that quality control plan and to, uh, you know, truly measure ourselves as a, at a level of completeness? Um, so the, the one in the middle is, you know, just a recent, you know, brainstorming session where we figured out, like, even what is stage one and stage two mean to us for completeness? And the one on the right is a giant piece of cardboard where um, this idea of, matching the skill level of the editor to the difficulty level of the task is totally the direction of how we make this repeatable and scalable. Because um, obviously we need a lot of people and um, I'm just gonna leave that for foreshadowing too. <laughs> oh, and perfect foreshadowing, yes, community. Um, so the, you know, the trees are protecting the road in the in the process, and that's you know you got to draw on your community, right? Um, so, one of the really interesting things about um, a community that's coming together and collaborating around a project is um, the difference between one-on-one -on -one conversations and the group. Um, obviously, the group you reduce redundancy and you avoid that telephone game of you know lost a common understanding along the way. But one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations really help people leave with action items and leave feeling like they're empowered. And um, so there was a good couple months of you know people showing up and being super interested, and then you know leaving without tasks or feeling like they're important to the group because there's you know there's this like beast of the of the idea growing and we're all contributing. But then at the end of the day, it was like, well, that was fun, and nobody has anything to do. So really. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what is the, the right sauce, but at the end of the day, it's just a lot of conversations, so many conversations. But um, good thing is that we all like to talk about maps, so <laughs> it's not torturous, but it is, um, it is arduous. There's a lot of work that goes into that. Um, so the foreshadowing I mentioned um, is related to contributors, and um, so we do have a... Uh, that link at the top is um, our public viewer for our stats. And so, you know, this isn't obviously intended for you to read the details of these things, just letting you know that it's there. Um, and, and so related to contributors, though, the main takeaway on the image on the left is that we have one editor in blue, right, who is, who's really, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, me. So, <laughs> um, you know, I'm testing things out. I'm, you know, I'm feeling the waters, right? I gotta do it. 
But um, you know, I have my few editors that I'm doing everything I can to keep their attention on the projects, and they've been doing okay, which are my orange, green, and red guys. But then that long tail of people um, is in Jennings' map from earlier. Um, they edit once and they don't come back. And so we're doing so much effort into um, into training all these people, and then they don't come back. And so again, that's that nod to, we really need to better articulate our, our workflow and the process so that we can maximize people's strengths and track to their strengths. Because some people are gonna be totally in love with that no conflict, just clean it up and dump it in and then you know, get to 40,000 buildings in a month and you know, become number four editor in the nation. I was like, wow, that, that I need to sell to people, right? Because I know there's people that that resonates with. But then alongside that, I also need people that are like, eh, I don't really want to do that, but I'm super interested in, you know, building in the relations between units and, and the multi-parts, and, and what about the different heights? And so, you know, those are two different people with two different strengths, and getting them the tasks is, is really sort of the, the navigable water there. Um, yeah, I had a thing in here, too, about the, like, the slow road. I think that also, you know, goes goes along with that. So um, here's this cardboard thing again. I really love this, um, mostly because I think it's hilarious how things exist in our heads, and it's like, oh, it's going to be so cool. And the most we can do is get it on paper, but then like turning it into an actionable thing. Yeah. Um, somebody was like, you should have just had somebody on Fiverr write it up for you, and then you'd look all fabulous. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Add it to the backlog. So um, the other thing is perspectives. Um, so uh, people working on our map don't always have the same mission, uh, but we kind of do, and for better or worse, we get along. So the guy in the middle here, his name's Cha Cha Fish, and uh, people who are familiar with the map know who this guy is, and in many ways he's like a Yeti, because you see his footprints in the map, but nobody has ever met him. He like lived in UAE for a couple years, and he's just this like world traveler guy. His blog is actually the something wandering nomad. Shoot, I should have had that on the thing, but... Um, at any rate, he travels a lot and he's really cool. Um, and so, but you can see if you look at the map on the left and the right, what's the difference um, is that he is very highly detailed mapping. You can see all the green spaces are mapped in. And on the right is our building import. So we're just bringing in those footprints. Um, and in the beginning, we started in his domain and we dumped some stuff on his buildings and he was super nice about it but I could tell he was super annoyed as well so my joke is that um, it took somebody with annoying level Margaret to bring somebody like that out of the woodwork from halfway around the world to come back and be like what are you guys doing you know <laughs> and uh, so um, so his thing is really um, editing for the renderer right and I know that that's like a contentious thing but um, that's really what he's all about. He wants this like highly detailed thing so that he can build 3D models and that's his jam. And that's cool. Um, and this is where, I, but, right? So when I have conversations with him, back to that one-to-one -one versus the group, he's like, uh, I don't have a problem with imports, but, and then everybody else is like, well, I mean, I don't really have a problem with high de detail editing, but, so we have these like conflicting perspectives and conflicting uses of what people want to do with the map. So. Um, just adds to the, the layers of um, what's going on with the, the project. So here's just a quick screenshot. Um, and, and out in the wild, I'm not entirely sure what F4 map is, except that they build SketchUp models on OpenStreetMap. But they took our highly detailed stuff that Cha Cha Fish built. And um, so you can see the legs on the water tower there, tagging for the renderer. And yeah, I wanted to have this like fly through GIF that would have been really cool, but you should just check out the <laughs> uh, site. So uh, without mistake, um, the address has got the wandering around aimlessly in the desert icon because there's, <laughs> there's a lot of work there and it's tiring and, and, and thirst driving. Um, so I foreshadowed on North. Um, one of the big challenges that we have is that the city of Denver, um, they have recently adopted North onto their streets, but they're not changing the street signs. So 
what do we do with that the on the ground versus downstream uses? Um, so we still gotta think and talk about that one. Um, Jefferson County historically has been a no share sell your data model. Um, they recently have had commission turnover, but um, for our merge, anything west of Sheridan and then along that jaggedy line at the bottom, um, we haven't merged addresses in because they weren't available. So uh, we also have that as part of our nine county. Um, but ultimately, um, we did say yes to addresses because uh, we really value that attribution. And when we talk about what, you know, Dr. Cog came to us in the first place, that's one of the things that they're really interested in seeing. And if our, you know, point of this project is to get the workflow and to, and to test these things out, then, um, then you know, I, I don't know how we could have said no to addresses, really. Um, so this is a really great uh, mural that's since been painted over. Our murals have a lot of... Um, uh, turnover, especially part of that uh, organization that I talked about that purposely brings artists in to paint over other things. So temporal capture of murals is a big thing on our radar. Um, but so where the addresses end is our, um, again, Jennings tool that he created. And, um, and so really looking for where building equals residential or where um, maybe even building equals house or whatever, but doesn't have the attributes. Um, led us to this uh, conversation on Slack about the incomplete address query. And, uh, and then that conversation on Slack <laughs> uh, became a thread, which led to uh, you know, the idea of going out into the field and just playing around with what could happen if we tried to just go get those addresses. Like, how, you know, what fun. So, um, and also, if you've ever pasted Slack into Photoshop, or into <laughs> it does this, and it's kind of, it tells a story in and of itself, right? The conversation grew. And so, um, you know, following a phone call in about a week, we had, um, GeoJSON files created with the individual structures with incomplete addresses. And uh, then we use Mapillary capture projects, which essentially is like tasking manager for Mapillary. And so you can kind of see where people, here's the people, they picked out the little spots and this was our, where we met for the meetup and then everybody spread out and went around and grabbed the addresses and all sorts of interesting things came back with that. We probably could have picked a better neighborhood for that. <laughs> uh, I'll maybe just leave that at that. You can imagine why that would matter. <laughs> um, but ultimately our goal is this ground truth uh, process. And so um, we threw it into pick for review because um, Chris from Appalary was like, yeah, this is maybe kind of let's give it a go. And um, so one of the first things is that pick for review lets you do one attribute at a time. We need to do the number and the, um, the road name. Um, but also uh, we found out that forward facing imagery, tough to get the addresses. And, um, and sometimes the addresses are on things like dumpsters and things that you wouldn't expect to look at. So, um, so that was a real good discovery. And then also just, you know, you notice all these other things that are going on, like in the right-hand corner, there's this building that um, clearly in the imagery, they just have a part of a building identified what's going on there. Um, but pick for review saying, hey, there's no address on the left, and I'm going, hmm, what's going on on the right? So in terms of discovery, that's what's really fun about this, is that we just get to play around and like try stuff out. And so here's one that actually like would have worked, except there was no address on the building. <laughs> so. You know, um, we're definitely thinking about map roulette, though. Um, we think there's a lot of potential there. And so, you know, in terms of tools and the project, those are some of the really exciting things that are in front of us. So um, at the end of it, though, it's all really fun. But then what goes into the wiki is the question. So um, again, uh, you know, gifts are awesome, but I didn't do it, sorry. So here you can go to the website and, and see, actually I didn't even put the URL on there, but it's in one of the previous uh, slides. So um, just a little call outs are where we've been able to add over time. And the slider bar across the bottom, you can kind of see where there's spikes and humps. And that's totally related to, um, you know, those different bottlenecks that I talked about along the way. Like we had a few tasks up there, but somebody wasn't putting tasks up. So we had the spike and then the lull and then the spike, something happened. And then finally over here, all the way to the right, when we broke that bottleneck and we got a bunch of tasks up, that's when I added all those buildings. Um, but we still obviously have a long way to go. So this is gonna be really cool 
next year when I can do the interactive visual one and it like lights up and fires up and, and there's actually buildings added that are showing. Um, Cause even just putting the screenshots next to each other, I was like, they kind of just look like the same <laughs> at this point. So, um, so yeah, so when we check back in on our progress map, um, we're kind of, we made it to progress and mapping our progress, but we still have a ways to go. So the uphill part and the things that are unseen, um, those are all juicy bits that we're looking forward to in the future. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it really is about this framework and the repeatability. And, um, and so um, we're, we're tracking towards um, uh, obviously documentation that's gonna make that repeatable for us. So um, thanks guys for your time, I really appreciate it. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, I'm around.